Throughout the history of Tamriel, tribes, clans, armies and empires have warred over land. In feudal society, it is the one constant. Where there is land to be claimed, there will always be mortals to fight over it. And things are no different far to the northeast on the frozen Isle of Solstein, where a group of humans and a tribe of primitive reeklings have engaged in a battle of wits and might to claim ownership of the first Kameed Hall. What's up guys, it's Drew here and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. In this video I'm going to tell you all about the Reeklings inhabiting the island and the embittered Nords who appear to have been outsmarted by the little pygmy gremlins. According to Beredit Gestal, the Breton bookseller who once resided there, on the eastern bank of Lake Fjalding stands Fursk, a grand mead hall that serves as the home and centre of operations for a most valiant clan of Nord warriors. Now, given the current proprietors of the hall, the term valiant seems a little ironic, but as the Dragonborn we may use our powers, the likes of which will go down in history and folklore evermore, to solve this petty residential dispute between the newly homeless Nords and the Reeklings living inside the hall. When we first make our way to the Mead Hall, we get a rather picturesque view of the tranquil lake beside it. Just make sure that your eyeballs don't freeze over while you try to take it in. The lake is relatively uninteresting. Not much happens here except for once in a blue moon when the Daedric Prince Hercene comes along and summons a pillar of fire, erecting it from the depths of the lake. But yeah, all things considered, it's a pretty mundane location by Tamrielic standards. This Mead Hall on the other hand, this place has quite a long history. The book Fursk, A Revised History, tells the full tale, but I'll keep it simple. Fursk was built by a wandering group of Nords who broke off from the Skull tribe of Solstein. The remains of this tribe and the Skull village can be found not too far northeast of the hall. The Mead Hall served as a hunting lodge to the tribe, but their construction had awoken something, something ancient and powerful, called the Udafrakt. A sorcerer managed to drive the troll-like monster back to its lair, but not before it could slaughter half of their numbers. What followed was a feud between the surviving Nords over who would lead their new clan, becoming the chieftain of the first Mead Hall. Two Nords fought for the title, Hrothman the Red and Drenger Bronzehelm. Hrothman beheaded Drenger where he stood, and to the settlers of the first tribe, that was a pretty sound reason to give him what he wanted. Not the most civil election process. Nevertheless, the Nords of Lake Fjalding lived well for some time, and it became tradition that every new leader would visit Hrothman's barrow to gain his consent. Many years later, the return of the Blood Moon Prophecy and the Pillar of Fire in the lake brought the troll Udafrykt back from his slumber, and once again he ravaged the tribe, leaving only one survivor. Thanks to the fabled Nerevereen, the troll was finally put to rest, and the Nords lived in the hall brewing their mead until the 201st year of the Fourth Era, when their throne was usurped by the mighty chief of the Reeklings. The wise chief uttered his famous words, Chief smart, most Reekling dumb, but chief smart. We family, we strong. And I can only hope the scholars got that inspiring line down on parchment. Inside the hall, the Reeklings have made themselves at home, decorating the place like a stone and timber cave. We can meet the chief firsthand, and he will say, You, you must run and help me like you. Who are you? You, you strong, help like you. What is going on here? We, family, we strong, you stronger. Are you saying you want my help? Bilkemak, run, prize beast, run. You will try again, chase away. Bilkemak, fear. You bring he follow you, yes. Bilgamak is an animal of some kind, and you want it back? Bilkemak, prize beast, you find he follow. Bilkemak, love meat, key meat, he follow, you go. Well, it may seem far-fetched that a four-foot-tall pygmy beast was able to usurp the home of a Nordic tribe, but the chief has even gotten us running errands for him now. He quite clearly has a way with words, so now we will have to go run some errands for the tribe, starting with the return of their pet bristleback. While we search, it is worth pondering. I may make fun of Reeklings, but the achievements of this bunch are hard to overlook. The simple fact that we can understand this chief is fascinating as these hostile little creatures are usually impossible to comprehend. They dwell in caves and ruins within very basic tribal societies, 
Leaders are usually determined by strength alone, and a new leader can be acknowledged as soon as they kill the previous one. Though in fairness, that sounds remarkably similar to the intelligent clans that held the hall before the Rieklings. Rieklings have developed basic tools, basic animal husbandry in the form of domesticated bristlebacks, and even rudimentary elements of religion and language. But beyond that, they are little more than pesky scavengers. So yes, we really have to give it to this Reekling chief. Bujold the Unworthy must be really lacking in self-esteem after this whole ordeal. Anyway, Bilgamuk is only a short walk away, and we can find him by following the shores of Lake Fjalding. Give him the hawker meat and he'll follow without trouble. Returning to the chief, he will be full of praise for us. Bilgamuk, follow you. Bilgamuk, no strength. Try to keep stronger. You stay here more. You want me to do something else? Try to keep missing Red Cross. Need more. God speak. Dance. You bring red grass, we dance. What is this red grass? Yeah, like this, go pray to hands of red grass, be friend of tribe chief. The trend seems pretty clear now. These reeklings really need us to be their big tough errand boy, and in the interest of time I'll spare you the omnipresent commentary for the task of harvesting grass. The plant grows in abundance all over Solstheim, and it can be brought from alchemists as well. When we return with ten scathecraw, or red grass as he calls it, the chief will up the ante considerably. Red grass. I bought your scathecraw. Good red grass. Later we earn. Now, final task. Then you track it. What do we need to do now? Bad north, say, first theirs. Live by water. Bother tribe kid. We fight. You strong, you help. No more bad noise. You want me to kill people? Bad people, they come fight us. We fight back now. Let's hold off on giving a definite answer until we've seen these Nords for ourselves. You know, we know. Come fight. We wait, but you come fight. Bujold's retreat is just to the east of the hall, far enough away that the mighty Nords can avoid harassment from the little Reeklings. When we approach the leader, a woman named Bujold the Unworthy will say, What's going on here is that we've been kicked out of our home. The Mead Hall, up there on the hill. We were... Some Reeklings have taken it over. And now for the big question we've all had on our minds. How were Reeklings able to overpower you? With tenacity and numbers. It didn't help that we'd grown a little too comfortable up there. Too much mead, too many stories, too few battles. What if you had one extra warrior? Are you offering to help? Some new blood should be enough to rouse these layabouts to actually fight again. Once again, let's not commit just yet. Well, I hope you'll come back around. Looks like you might be just the thing we need to wake these idiots. Now we have a big decision to make. We can help our new tribekin wipe out the Nords who linger like a sour smell just beyond the reaches of Lake Fjalding, or we can take pity on Bujold and her layabouts, restoring them their home which was built by their ancestors centuries prior. Whichever side we take will sever ties with the other side, guaranteeing that one of these quests results in failure. So the battle can take place at the retreat, where you and the Reeklings can ambush the Nords, spilling their blood in the waters of the Sea of Ghosts. Alternatively, you and the Nords can storm the hall, butchering the Reeklings and restoring the Mead Hall to its former proprietors. Your decision will likely come down to the ramifications attached to each choice. If you side with the Reeklings, making quick work of the unworthy Craven Nords, the Chieftain will realise that the Dragonborn is too strong to be allowed into the tribe. For in primitive Reekling hierarchies, power equals leadership. He will attack, and upon his death, the Reeklings will recognize you as their new chieftain. This choice comes with some really cool side effects. From that day onwards, any of the surviving Reeklings can be recruited as followers. And whenever you enter a fight on Solstheim, or even mainland Skyrim, there is a chance that between one to three Reeklings will appear to assist you in combat. Who wouldn't want a spear-chucking sidekick to accompany them in battle? If we instead choose to take pity on Bujold the Unworthy, she will motivate her men with an inspiring speech. Hey, you lazy milk drinkers, get over here. I know you're all starting to settle in here and keep up the fat lives you've got used to up in the hall. 
But look here. This outsider has more fire than any of you. All I had to do was mention our little infestation, and he volunteered in a second. I don't want to have my spirit outstripped by some wanderer, so let's get up there and kill us some Reeklings. With the Dragonborn among their ranks, the fight is over quickly, but that's not the end of the story for these Nords. Speaking to Bujold after the bloodshed is over will prompt her to say, Ah, oh, that was almost exhilarating. How are you feeling? That was easy. Good to hear. In fact, that's just the spirit I'll need from my second. Do you want to come with me? Where are you going? To Rothmund's Barrow. I need to get his blessing again before we take up residence here. I'll need a witness and... Well, you see the kind of horker brains I deal with around here. What do you say? It seems old traditions die hard, and Hrothman the Red, the legendary warrior we spoke of who severed Drenger's head from his shoulders, will undoubtedly have a lot to say to Bujold the Unworthy. In order to commune with his spirit, we must cross his flooded barrow. At the far end of the antechamber, his axe rests in the stone. As she reaches for the axe, Hrothman speaks. You seek my blessing for the leadership of Thirsk Hall? I do. It is I, Bujold. You blessed me in the past, and now I've rid the Hall of Reeklings and returned it to its rightful owners. And well it is that this has happened. But I have always watched, and know that it was your softness that led to your own exile. You allowed your fellow warriors to grow weak, while the dangers around you mounted. Then, the leadership is not mine? No. Nor is there any among you fit to serve. For a band in the wilderness, it's better to have no leader than a poor one. That was a little embarrassing. How are you feeling about that? Ashamed. But I guess that was the point. I need to return to Thursk. No matter what Rothman says, we need a leader. And I'm still the best person for that. You'll go against his wishes? Look what's happened to us so far under his watchful eye. He gave his blessing to all the leaders who brought us to this point. Anyway, he's dead and we're alive. It's time to begin a new tradition for Thursk. And I'm going to do that. All I need is for you to back me up. You don't even need to lie. Just don't tell anyone else what you heard here. And then we are faced with one final decision. We can kill her for her deception. We can let her return and lead the tribe without speaking up. Or we let her live, but tell the tribe the truth, causing her to be exiled. No matter what the solution here, Hrothman's blessing and the tradition set in place by the constructors of the first Mead Hall are forgotten. So I can't help but feel that if Hrothman cannot decide who leads, maybe siding with the Reeklings and becoming their chieftain is the best option. Plus the Reeklings are far more pleasant than Bujold the Unworthy. And there you have it guys, the full story of the first Mead Hall, the Reeklings and the Shunned Nords. If you enjoyed the video, a like would be massively appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, I've been Drew and I will see you next time.